Hello guys. Greetings of the day and I just wish that you guys are doing wonders today. My name is Ninad Bhatt from Serpent Consulting Services Private Limited and welcome to the second part of our series in which we are discussing a freight management solution. So I just hope that you guys already have gone through the first part of, uh, of, of our series in which you know, we started by discussing the basic navigation of our solution, of our, our freight management solution. And also we had uh, the, the basic introduction uh, of Serpent CS as an organization. Yep. So I would request you to follow our YouTube channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any further videos that you are going to upload in future. And uh, so that you also can get, get get to know more about our services and our solutions. All right. Uh, fine. So let's go ahead with the second part of uh, this series. In this particular video, we are going to have a look at the options available to configure our solution. So configuration measure menu items will be discussed, of course, and we are going to have the brief and detailed look inside the various options available, uh, you know, to us. But prior to start explaining you the, uh, the options to configure, uh, I simply would like to show you uh, a very basic example. So why we need the configuration or let's say why we need the pre-configured data to utilize our solution in the best way possible. So as you can see, currently we are viewing the shipping order. Though we are going to have a very detailed look inside the shipping order and for the things, I mean, how, how, how the things are being processed and every other of that thing in the later videos in this series. But just to show you some example, let's say uh, I, would, I, would, I would go inside the general information over here. So this is a particular segment wherein uh, the sh uh, while we are creating the shipping order, it is asking us for loading and discharging ports. And of course, as you can see that we have the pre-configured and pre-entered data and hence we this particular list is coming from somewhere. All right. Uh, we, however, will have an option to create uh, the new record on the go. But of course, it's it's quite more time saving if we have something in a list and if we simply be able to select a right option for us from the list, of course, that will be very time saving for all of us, right? Same goes with some other modules, some other options as well over here. Let's say if you are working with the freight forwarder or let's say if you only accept and send freights by some kind of agents. So we have an option for that. And as you can see that uh, when we are entering the agent details, we have a small list for that as well. But again, we have an option to get it configured by using some other modules, let's say. We simply can create a contact of uh, the companies and people who works as an agent. And if, let's say, your company is working with such agents, we have an option to get it pre-entered. And hence, we will be able to see this data over here in this particular list. So there would be many such uh, fields to be entered while working with uh, shipping orders, not only with shipping orders, but yes, there will be, uh, uh, you know, other uh, aspects and there will be other areas of the solution wherein you will need the pre-configured data so that it prevents you to enter the data on a repetitive basis. If you have something that you believe that uh, will be entered, uh, you know, repetitively, so you simply can get it configured and you simply can have the list readily available to select the record from. Right. So these are the two of the examples, uh, I would say, uh, that why we need and why we should focus more and focus in the right direction when it comes to configuring the solution. So fortunately, we are having a separate segment over here in the solution, which allows us to configure many things right from the ports. Right. Because we just have taken that example of ports uh, itself. Uh, we will be able to configure the vessels as well. In general, the vessels are nothing. I mean, this particular term is being used for the ships, uh, you know, which are there uh, into the commuter, which are there being used by the freight forwarders or let's say the freight companies. Same goes with the airlines as well. If you have, uh, let's say, if, if you come across any situation wherein you need to select or you need to enter the airline's name. So again, to prevent... Uh, uh, to prevent you to enter some of the repetitive data, you simply will be able to have a list of airlines which will be, which uh, if you have configured the airlines from here from this menu. And same goes with containers and pricing list. 
so guys let's go ahead with uh, the options and let's start with the ports over here so it's very simple we have an option to create the new record from here but by default it will simply be listing down the pre-created uh, ports uh, right so let's say if you're creating the new one we have an option to give it a name you if you want to uh, give it some kind of code to this particular port so that's up to you you can do that however the, the the field is mandatory but yes you can simply make it something which will be identical when it comes to the selection of the ports so name code country of course that's that's the default feature in Odoo that while we are entering the country we will simply be having the list of countries by default and uh, that's how we are entering the country for this particular port as well you can mention state here and a very important thing to mention here while creating a port is either this particular port will be serving us via land, ocean or air. So let's say if we have a look at some of the pre-created ports based on the selection of those checkboxes, we can simply see that which port is serving us in which way let's say if we talk about the if you talk about one of the cities of india new delhi so of course there will not be ocean so uh, it only offers its services via land which of course means that you can send and receive uh, the goods via land only not by ocean of course air option is also available since it's uh, one of the major cities of india so yes the ocean option will be disabled like this uh, also we are having something by which we, we are telling a system that whether this particular port should be active in a system or not so we simply can have this checkbox right if you want to get it activated and vice versa so if i talk about the other ports let's say mumbai port it is extensively available uh, uh to to send and receive freights via ocean of course right since many years so yes the ocean option is selected over here uh air traffic is also quite good i mean if you if you have something to be sent via air from mumbai so yes the mumbai location is uh, quite uh you know uh, good for that as well uh, so as of now the land option is not selected yet but yes according to your requirement or let's say if you feel that you have that you have such location uh, in and around the region of Mumbai so we can you can get it selected and you can serve your clients from Mumbai location via all these three available options when it comes to the physical location via land via ocean and via air. So guys that's how the ports are being created so as we see and in, in other words i would say that ports are nothing but the physical location of the uh you know uh, uh the place in fact wherein 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 the goods are being sent and received so let's go ahead and let's check in what's what's there inside the vessels so in general i would say that vessels is nothing but the ships generally being used to uh, commute from one country to another to another by having uh, the freights and goods of course so you simply will be able to create it like this we can give it a name we can give it a code if you want to get it activated within the system so yes we have a checkbox over here as well country to be selected from here and transport type it is actually when it comes it's it's majorly being used for the ships but still uh, if you just take it as a vehicle so yes we can simply say that uh, you can select an option let's say that whether this particular vehicle or whether this particular uh, a property will be serving either via land ocean or air but mostly as i said that vessel is nothing but a ship so mostly the ocean option will be selected from here based on your requirement you can select any of the options available so yes like that discarding it for now and just to have a look at the pre-created vessels so yes we also have an option to enter some notes if you want to you can edit some kind of notes by creating a vessel as simple as that the same goes with the airlines 
Now the airlines will not be having that option, that 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 uh, the option uh, to select that whether this particular vehicle is serving via ocean, land, or air. Of course, right? Since we are configuring the airlines, it will simply be asking us for a very few details. Let's say the name, code, if you want to give it to uh, country to select from here, and of course, if you want to get it activated, you can select this particular option like this. ICAO is nothing but the identical uniquely identical number of any of the airlines in the aviation sector they call it icao by which the actual fleet or i would say the actual uh, plane or actual airline will get uh quite more identical and it's, it's something to give some uh, you know uh, the kind of uh, unique identity to every vehicle and every airline so you can enter that information as well, though it's not the mandatory field. And uh, yes, if I'm forgetting to inform you that, I would say that, guys, uh, the mandatory fields will be in the dark line over here. Let's say in every of the uh, you know forms, as you might have seen, that the fields of name and some other important information will be uh, with a dark line. Some other fields may be in a gray line, which means that these fields are not that much mandatory or not at all mandatory, I would say. If you even miss to uh, inf uh, provide that information there, or let's say if you don't want to provide that information. So accordingly, those fields have been made mand mandatory and non-mandatory. So ICAO code or ICAO number over here is not mandatory as of now, but yes, for your as of use, I think you should enter that thing if you are having that information with you. Going ahead and send this record. And going back inside the pre-created airline. So this is how it will look like. In fact, once you uh, configure your airlines, this particular list of airlines will directly be made available while you're working with the shipping orders. Uh, uh, in fact, we just had a look in the initial portion of this particular video but yes again let's get it uh, let's let's check it once again let's see if i'm selecting the transport type as air we will simply be able to select the pre-created airlines directly from the list fine all right so that's that's how the configuration works and uh, to go further we have some more extensive configurations options available let's say to take care of our containers now i think containers would be having some more values and some more information uh, to get entered because see containers comes in various uh, sizes and types right so of course name will be as is the mandatory field you can give it a code over here now we have uh, an option to enter size. Majorly, it comes uh, in two different uh, sizes, uh, right? But yes, according to according to what what um, the kind of containers that you are working with, you can enter the size over here. Uh, UOM, which means that unit of measure, how you count the size of the container. Uh, right, you can mention that thing from here as well. Again, this is one of the default features of uh, Odoo. When it comes to the unit of measures, it will simply be listing down all the options, all the available options, and uh, you can go with any uh, suitable options according to your requirement and needs. Same goes with the weight, and you can mention volume here as well. And you simply can save the record if you want to create a new container. If you feel that the created and newly created container will uh, be used and uh, will come in handy while creating the shipping orders. So yes, we have an option for that and we can simply get this information added over here and we simply will be able to save it. But practically, I would suggest that uh, I think you should be following a particular naming pattern in a way. Let's say if I go inside uh, this particular uh, container, some of the containers would, would be, let's say, cold storage. If you are having some goods to be transported from one location to another, which needs the extensive cool, uh, ex uh, extensively cool environment, right? It can be something like uh, some vegetables or uh, any such things which cannot uh, be much prevented, you know. Uh, so for that, you we have an option to uh, do it in that way, but uh, just make it mentioned. Have it mentioned in the name itself. 
so that it will be quite more identical for you if you are uh, working with so many numbers of uh, uh, containers so this is going to be the container code this is uh, sorry this is going to be the container number which will which will auto generate it uh, the containers name that uh, you have given while you are configuring the same code if you want to follow a particular pattern it's up to you what pattern that you want to follow and size and volume then weight all right and uh, the last option available inside the configuration manager menu will be pricing list so it might be an option for your clients whether they want to be built based on the 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 weight of goods they are uh, sending or they're receiving or let's say based on the volume there might be some things wherein you know they are they're ordering something in volume or let's say they want to send something to other country let's say and that too in volume so we have both the options available we simply can have the pricing list uh, right so according to your uh, 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 you know business requirement and business process we you'll be able to create the pricing list over here which will be asking us only two things Apart from name, only two important things will be there. Uh, what price that you want to quote them if they are if they are comfortable with the with the quotation based on the volume, and what price, what uh, how much it will cost them if they are comfortable to pay you based on the uh, weight. Yeah. So this is only two things, and that's how you can have a long list of uh, a pricing list available for you. So that in case you are creating a, a quotation or an invoice, you can accordingly you will you will be able to mention that thing out uh, while while working with the quotations or invoices, right? So that's how we simply can get it configured from here. So guys, as we have as we have seen that we have configured ports, we have configured vessels over here, airlines, containers pricing list and this data this pre-configured information and data will come in handy while we will start working with the shipping orders and uh, there will be many uh, you know uh, occurrences wherein we will just need the information in a quick, quickest way possible and that's that's how the pre-configured data will help us so thank you very much for being on this video i think that's pretty much about this uh, it seems that we have configured a solution in a way that we will directly be uh, able to use it. And in the next video, what we are going to cover will be the master data. Because again, that's, uh, that's however, not a part of the configuration, but again, it just works like that. If you are having something pre-entered within the master data, it will surely help us while you will be working with the freight operations further in the further videos. So thank you very much again for joining in and have a nice day.